This is my first view of the Millard A80 from REE. Um, feels like an age since we ordered them. Uh, they've obviously had a, a bit of a, a trial through Covid, if nothing else. And it's quite nice to see them. They're not all here. Um, we have been short shipped. Um, I can only apologise for that. Uh, there have been so many production problems out in the Far East. So at the moment we have received the analogue lo locos and uh, I have about 90% of what I ordered. Um, we expect the sound ones to come through and I also expect those to be short shipped as well. We have said that a further production will make up the, the losses, but it's going to be next year. So we'll do our best to try and catch up with everyone, um, do what we can. Um, there are three new models as well that weren't announced previously. And I may have to sort of juggle things around because they will be coming across the summer as well. So I expect these to be trickling in in three or four deliveries. Um, sadly, they're not all coming one one shipment, which would have made life a lot easier. So we'll have a closer look. I've got only a short length of 12mm track. Um, I imagine that most of these are going to be switched over to the 9mm running. So I'll show it a little bit better on some 9mm track. We'll just have a look at the details. At the LEDs to illuminate the headlights going forward and the interior lights and the interior lights have a power pack so it keeps them smooth once it's been running for a bit and that's charged up they will actually stay on for about two minutes the headlights obviously they can't do that because if when you change direction they wouldn't switch over but it's a, a nice feature with the interior lights really open inside. Let's quickly charge up the lamps. So what I'll do I'll lift the motor off. Run it a bit, there we go. Now I've got the lights on inside, you can see the interior. And they've kept that as open as they, they can. There's a little bit of compromise because you wanted some weight in the model. Uh, so they've got quite a thick die cast chassis to give it some traction weight. But it's everything I expect of REE. It's beautifully painted. All the details are straight. Neatly done. They use high quality motor. You can see it there with a flywheel. Drive is on four wheels, uh, two of them have got traction tyres. Pickup is on all eight. Um, you can see where they've left the gap for the nine millimetre wheels and I'll have a look at changing those over. It's a nice design feature. It's a little bit fiddly. Um, I can understand why because you've got to the pickups to hold the end of the, the wheels in. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. As you can see there, the lights have charged up and remained on for quite a length of time. So in the box there are some parts and there are, are some documents. There's a full uh, manual in English and French. Um, it covers changing the wheels over, fitting digital. Uh, it covers the sound models as well, so there's some things that won't be relevant to these analog ones. Um, so there's information in the white manual. In the grey manual is just a history in French of the rail cars, so just detailed photos. Oops. And in service. little bit of interest there. The first parts bag has got some spare brake hoses and it's got some hoop couplings. I think the, the centre buffer comes out and you can plug in one of these couplings if you want it to be towing something. 
And then the other bag is the 009 wheel sets on long pin axles. So I've removed the keeper plates. The, the long keeper plate is retained by two clips front and rear. The short keeper plate has clips across the middle that clip into the center square area. You can see that the, the pickups are actually a bit like Kato, you use the, the pinpoint bearing pickup at the end. So the wheels come out and the pickups come out. This is where a bit of dexterity is needed. So um, if you're not happy with doing that, I can convert them over to 9mm if you want. Of course, if you're keeping them on 12mm, then you only need to say. Um, it's doable, but it uh, is one of those jobs where you, you sometimes need a third hand. I've done the motor end. Um, so the little pinpoints there are retained by the bogey frame across here. So you want to lift them up so you've got a bit of lateral movement, movement to the side. So when you push the pinpoint in, you're not forcing this. So I wouldn't want to just force them in like you would do with wagon ones. I want to make sure that you're, you're getting in the cut without damaging either the pickup or the the pin. And then the retaining plate will hold it all in place. So I've now put it on the 9mm track. LEDs come up very quickly. Try and get it to the minimum my controller will do. It's a 40 year old Hammett and Morgan, so. A very nice little mechanism in there. So they've been worth waiting for. This is the grey pearl and uh, ruby livery, and this is the red and cream livery. I think the majority of them seem to be in this grey pearl. That's the earlier liveries. They've done very well with the dual gauging. It's a little bit fiddly, but it does the job and it still picks up efficiently, which is what you need of it. And we have created slight differences in the models so simple things like the roof vents on the top there are different between these two and of course the livery changes um, later in the year we will see the the single headlamp variants come through as well uh, so they, they are going to trickle through they are coming we did order years ago um, the ones that they haven't supplied were the last ones that we ordered, so I can sort of understand that they're just taking all the shops in turn as to how they placed their orders originally.